Sometimes the BC boys are out in space, right? What is that on screen? No astronomer has seen this before. Scientists say they're clueless about what it might be. A meteor, a star, clearly a UFO, as in unidentified. Michio Kaku is a theoretical physics professor and host of the new Science Channel series, Sci-Fi Science, Physics of the Impossible. Tuesdays at 10 o'clock, renewed for a second season. Congratulations on that. Thank you. Uh, back on the screen, what is it? We don't know. We are stumped. Uh, scientists around the world are saying, what the heck is this object? It doesn't fit any of the profiles of the usual suspects. That's the problem. Usual suspects are comets, meteor, stars, galaxies, stars. planets. How about uh, some sort of alien dealio? You Could might be. Be into that? Well, you know, the object is about the size of the Rose Bowl, Rose Bowl Stadium. So it's too small to be a planet or a star or a galaxy. And it's not a comet. There's no gas in the tail of that comet. It's not a meteor, because it's not inside the Earth's atmosphere. Uh -huh. So what is it? We're scratching our head. The only thing we can think of at the present time is a once-in-a-lifetime event, the collision of two asteroids in space. We've never seen that before, creating a starburst, a starburst of debris. And if that theory is correct, it means with the weeks, the starfish should get bigger and bigger and eventually fade away. So the asteroid collision, it, it may have happened before, we just have not seen evidence of it. This is the first time it's been caught on camera, if it is an asteroid collision. And what would that mean to folks like you? You would study that to figure out what, Michio? you? Well, we realize that asteroids are predictable. We know exactly where they are going around the sun, but if they collide, it's a game changer. We think that may have wiped out the dinosaurs. There was a cosmic collision about a hundred million years ago, debris was sent all over the asteroid belt, and one piece, get this, one piece hit the Earth from that collision about 65 million years ago, and that's when the dinosaurs died in perhaps just one year. So we think that an asteroid collision, a big one, probably wiped out the dinosaurs. Well, wow, so that would be significant for people like you, because what happened was I guess some folks saw this deep in space and they said, you need to check that out. So we took the Hubble telescope and mm -hmm. we pointed it in this direction, and now we have these brilliant pictures. That's right. A month ago, we spot this little speck doing all sorts of shenanigans that it shouldn't be doing. The Hubble Space Telescope zooms in on it, and we, our jaws hit the floor. At it's that point, we were saying... Thing. Uh, now, it's called the P slash 2010 A2, and you say that's short for... We are clueless. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. So we have to learn a lot more about these asteroid collisions. Uh, that's tells right. a lot about our future, right? That's right, and they're random. We don't know where they come from, and if the debris hits the Earth, they're unpredictable, and we think the dinosaurs got wiped out precisely in this way. Only if they had the Hubble. <laughs> come on. <laughs> Uh, Tuesday night, 10 o'clock, check him out on the Science Channel. I'll meet you. Thank you very much. Right. Good to Thank see you. you as all. Brand new information today raising new questions about possible contacts with UFOs. A top secret document filed by the FBI in 1949 tells how three different men each reported seeing a UFO breaking up in midair. The document reveals that they were miles apart at the time, and each one of them say they saw the UFO explode over the mountains in Utah. Here now, Dr. Lynn Kitai, the executive producer of the Phoenix Lights Network, to tell us more. Uh, doctor, what do you make of this? Actually, it's, it's interesting that, that this would go viral. Supposedly, it's been on the Internet since 19, or available to the public since 1977. And um, uh, I spoke with Dr. Bruce McAbee, who is a former Navy optical uh, physicist and a renowned UFO investigator who actually has done much research uh, on the FBI files. He has a book, UFO's Connection, and to quote him, that we have been visited by um, advanced technology uh, that's gracing our skies oh. worldwide, not only, not only for decades, uh, as this would say, but also for, for centuries. Well, and, and To, to, uh, to Hoover, there was a project, Grudge and Sign and, and Snowbird, and uh, the only public 
study at the time was Project Blue Book, uh, which was closed in 1969 with the statement that uh, UFOs are not a threat to national security. Well, how did they know that unless they were studying it? Um, and as we see in the, in the uh, mass sighting that happened in Arizona in 1997 called the Phoenix Lights, there were thousands of people statewide for many hours that, that actually saw a mile to two mile wide craft traverse the entire state. Uh, and that still has uh, not been explained. Well, Doctor, it's certainly an interesting topic. Folks will want to dig into these documents. They can find them online. Thank you so much for your time today, Dr. Lynn Kitai. From cyberspace to outer space, the number of UFO sightings in Canada is soaring tenfold over the past 25 years. The majority of those flying objects eventually get identified, but a few are never explained. And that's enough to keep some sky watchers wondering if just one sighting could be real. Here's Ross Lord. Blame it on Hollywood. But an increasing number of Canadians insist the drama surrounding unidentified flying objects is real. There is a very bright light, and I kept watching, and they just threw it right up, right across, just floating like it was floating. Sort of like these images from Halifax. What the hell is that? This is the second time I've seen it. Fort Saskatchewan, Winnipeg, London, Sudbury. This Winnipeg science writer has never seen one, but Chris Rutkowski works with a network of observers on an annual UFO survey. It doesn't automatically say the aliens are invading and, and landing in uh, Mississauga. What it does say is that people are seeing some very unusual objects, uh, many of which we can't uh, ascribe to a simple explanation. And UFO sightings in Canada are soaring to new heights. When they started keeping track 25 years ago, there were barely more than 100 a year. Since then, a steady increase, spiking to almost 2,000 two years ago. Last year was the second highest number on record. Only about 14 or 15 percent of the cases in 2013 are unexplained. Just enough mystery to keep UFO believers wondering. Occasionally I've noticed things that were moving across the sky that were not planes or satellites, just a different color, um, a different shape. And even the experts admit there likely are advanced civilizations out there somewhere. Maybe there's ways around the laws of physics or ways of traveling that we haven't even conceived of yet. And why they would want to come to Earth, I don't know. May, might be the scenery or the weather. Hmm, maybe the Canadian winter isn't so bad if you're watching from a safe distance. Ross Lohr, Global News. Halifax. Well, it was not a bird. It wasn't a plane. And sadly, it was not Superman. But something in the skies over the Houston area this morning did cause a lot of people to look up and wonder. Eyewitness News reporter Deborah Wrigley joining us live with some answers, or maybe not. Deborah? Or maybe not, Tom. If this was a meteorite, it is highly unusual for one to be seen during the daylight. But there's nothing usual about what happened today. From a NASA camera, it looked like a bright light above the Earth. That's the view from space. These are from eyewitness viewers around the Houston area, just as day was breaking before 7 this morning. A bright flash of light that some people first thought was lightning. I was like, okay, I guess it's going to rain. It wasn't the weather, and it was spotted all around Texas. This map, just a sampling of sightings in the Houston area. And these are some of the pictures sent to ABC13.com showing a small area of colored light, others showing a trail behind it. And people have been talking about it all day. Like a UFO taking a picture of the sky, like a big flash. But the coworkers were talking about, did you, you know, hear about the, the flash this morning? I'm like, flash, should I be concerned? At the Houston Museum of Natural Science, not concerned, but a lot of curiosity. Yeah, and it's going so fast that it actually gets through the atmosphere that makes the glow. The museum's astronomer suspects it's a meteorite, a small piece of rock burning through space, if it meets the criteria. Did it make a trail? Did it actually move? Did it change color? Did it move from east to west? A lot of scientists searching for an explanation to what's called the fireball over Texas. A lot of people who aren't scientists as well. I've heard so many different things about, you know, 2012, so it's like kind of scary because it's getting closer to that day and then... 
Coincidentally, there is a meteor shower predicted for next week. And if you're curious about the story, about the pictures, go to abc13.com. We have those viewer pictures also, that amazing NASA video. At the Houston Museum of Natural Science, Deborah Brickley, 13 Eyewitness News. Do you ever wonder what you're really seeing up in the night sky? I mean, could that strange shape or fast-moving object actually be a UFO? Or is it just a cellophane wrapper blowing in the wind? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, uh, well we sent News 10's Dave Marcus out to check it out. And Dave, uh, so what is out there, huh? Well, Dale and Christina, you might be not surprised to find out that UFO sightings have turned out to be everything from fast food containers blown up into the sky to objects that even professional pilots and astronauts have been left shaking their heads over in wonder. Something is going on if there's something up there. It can be something real, not just subjective. Local UFO watchers say sightings around Sacramento, especially in the foothills, have been up lately. Local author Ben Stecker has written extensively on UFOs. There's a phenomenon that we are perhaps several phenomena that we don't even begin to understand. Maybe they are Pleiadians or whatever from another planet or from Mars even. Local astronomer Liam McDade is more than a little skeptical. It's probably not an alien species that's traveled X number of light years to come here and harass us without doing anything obvious or overt, like landing on the White House lawn, uh, having a beer with Obama. Stecker agrees the many unexplained sightings may not be from outer space. Maybe they're, they're objects built right here by some group on Earth or by our own government. Whether from Earth or not, many scientists like McDade would just like to see some hard evidence. I need to see some actual alien hardware technology, metal, ashtray with Alpha Centauri Hilton on it, something that will make it clear to me that it does not come from our planet. More sightings, whatever they are, says Stecker, may just be that more people are gazing with interest into the night sky. We know we're confronted with a major mystery, but we don't really know what it is. Uh, there's many famous sightings of various things over the years that we've never known what they were, and, and we probably never will. And in science, that's fine. Now, McDade says most of these stranger sightings turn out to be things like second-stage rocket boosters or other fairly explainable phenomena. On the other hand, Steckler believes that so many sightings remain unexplained that there's plenty of room for speculation, including alien high technology that we can barely imagine. So there you are. And by the way, do you think it would be newsworthy if aliens did come down and have a beer with Obama? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Maybe they have. Maybe they have. It's just everyone's... <laughs> Mysterious lights hovering in the skies across several parts of the country. This video is from Indianapolis of a strange formation that appeared this week. Now, people in Metro Detroit say they've seen something just like it. Last night, our newsroom and our Facebook page got several reports of strange lights in the skies over Metro Detroit. And tonight, Fox News' Ron Savage is on a mission to find out what they really are. Ron. You, well, you know how we operate here. We do stories on talkers, and this is a talker. Everybody's talking about it. What are the lights in the sky? Mysterious lights in the sky. Many Metro Detroiters have been wondering, what am I seeing? It wasn't qu quite as high as you would see. Them. I've been watching the airplanes tonight, and it wasn't quite as high as them. And uh, I mean, like I said, you, can, you could actually see the triangle shape of, of the object. David Levy was outside Thursday night, 9.30 p.m. with friends in Flat Rock, and suddenly... We were outside, and... Out, up in the sky, we saw a, a triangle-shaped light with, or a triangle-shaped object with about five lights flashing, heading north. Who saw it first, a friend or? Did you I did, I did. Yes. Yeah. What'd you say? I, I asked people, what, "What do you think that is?" And everybody was like, "I don't know, I don't know." And then uh, later on at night, I found out that people had been seeing this object all all over. In fact, our Fox 2 Facebook page has been blowing up with hundreds of posts, people seeing lights like Lisa. She writes, I seen some in Southgate, but thought it was fireworks and weird for January. Nick writes, I assumed they were planes. They were flying in the same direction. I watched them for about 10 minutes, and I counted four or five of them. I'm over in St. Clair Shores. Mario writes, I seen it in East Point off Nine Mile. It was something crazy. And Sean writes, I was the one who called into the Fox 2 newsroom and first broke this story. They were black triangle-shaped objects making circles over West Bloomfield and Farmington Hills. There was no noise, and they had bright lights. I'm not making this up, and I know somebody else saw these things. 
These lights are all over YouTube. The original poster says they were shot in Miami this week. And these lights were said to be shot in Indianapolis. Is this similar to what David saw in Flat Rock? This kind of looks like a stand in one spot, but that's exactly what it looked like, except there was five of them. Five lights. Five lights. William Konkoleski of the Michigan Mutual UFO Network has also been taking calls from people who see lights at night all across Metro Detroit. It's very possible that people are seeing military aircraft that they haven't notified us about yet, um, like the spy planes or the, also the stealth aircraft um, that are, have been flying on our skies now for a few years. It's well known that they were testing these aircraft well before they notified people that they even existed. Now, on top of all that, we have unmanned drones up in the sky, and those things really look strange, especially for somebody that has no idea what they could even be. And certainly some people may be skeptical when they hear that somebody's reporting lights in the sky, but perhaps there is a logical explanation for some of these light displays. They've been reported all over, all over the country, and all around the calendar, all, all year round. It doesn't seem to be a particular time of the year when they're reported more so than others. And across Michigan and Metro Detroit, we're getting reports, and our Facebook page has been blowing up, as you know recently, Hugh, with a lot of people reporting these lights. Ron, for years, the Air Force conducted an investigation of so-called UFOs. They found no official proof anywhere from the feds tonight about those strange lights. Well, you wonder if the military is involved, as one of our uh, UFO experts uh, was curious there and mentioned. We did put some calls into Selfridge, the FAA. We didn't get any reaction. Could be a logical explanation for some of these light displays. I'll tell you this, there's no full moon right now, but we're getting an awful lot of reports of lights in the sky. Huel? Certainly not a weather balloon, Ron. All right, thank you. That's right. <laughs> talk tonight boy wrap your head around this ufo sightings are skyrocketing in 2012 and we're barely two weeks in eyewitnesses reporting strange things in 36 out of the 50 states and yeah florida's included we are joined on the phone right now peter davenport from the uh, he's the director of the ufo center there in uh, washington peter uh, let me tell you something everybody's got a, a cell phone camera these days i'm imagining if you're having a lot of sightings you're getting some pretty good pictures well we get some pictures but the overwhelming majority of them are of low quality as you say from those cell phones what we encourage people to do if they see what they think may be a ufo is try to get a good camera, stabilize the camera no matter what they're using, and try to get a good still photo of it. Peter, why do you think you're getting so many this early in the year? Is it because it's 2012 and you got everybody going, oh, it's the Mayan calendar? Uh, I'm not one of those who believes that there's anything special about 2012, Bob, but uh -huh. I just, just before this program I reviewed our database. We took 110 reports on New Year's Eve, 13 of them are from Florida, and uh, something is going on. I mm -hmm. think it's picked up dramatically, the number of reports we're receiving. But what it means, I have no idea. What's the best picture you've ever seen, the best UFO you've ever seen, or at least seen a picture of? Well, uh, it's hard to say. I think the McMinnville, Oregon photo back in 1951, May of 51, uh, was probably one of the best. But there have been some good ones since that time. There were some good ones... Uh, captured during the Phoenix Lights event of March 13th. Yes, I've seen those. Those are those are terrific. Do you do you think this is going to continue throughout 2012? You think there's something, maybe something special going on right now? I have no idea, but I appear to be one of only very few UFO investigators who cannot see the future events clearly. <laughs> uh, I just don't know what's what's going to happen, Bob. And I'm trained as a hard scientist, so I wait for the data to come in, and I make judgment on that so you don't you're not a paranormal uh scientist you're not a, you're not a ghostbuster or anything like that you just wait for the hard evidence i wait for good solid eyewitness accounts from credible american citizens or citizens from around the world and I look at what I've collected and uh -huh. try to make a decision on that. Peter, I've always wished that I, I could see a UFO. Have you ever in your life seen one? I have. In fact, I saw a doozy of a sighting here out in eastern Washington on the, I think it was the 17th of October last year, 2011. I was out for a walk on our local golf course and saw something go over at 6.42 p.m., for which I have absolutely no, exper no explanation 
Uh, I've been a commercial pilot for the last 33 years, and I've never seen anything like that. No kidding. Well, it's very, it's fascinating to be sure, and uh, hopefully we'll uh, get people to go to your website and take a look and see those photos for themselves. Peter, we appreciate you spending some time with us today. Thank you very much for your interest, Bob. Mm -hmm. Something strange was spotted in the sky above Pike County Tuesday. At this point, there's still no explanation as to what it was, and people are left wondering what's flying over their heads. LEX18's Adam Weiner has more. These images, snapped by Alan Epling, has the man stumped. And that's saying something coming from a longtime amateur astronomer. I know a satellite when I see it. I track satellites with my ham radio and the telescope. But this object is like nothing he's ever seen. We were just sitting around talking, and uh, she said, there's a strange airplane in the sky. So Epling went to take a closer look. Like he had a giant mirror in the sky reflecting sunlight. And he saw something very different. And so I thought, well... There's a shiny helicopter or plane hovering up there. I'm going to look at it. I got my binoculars out, and when I looked through the binoculars, I was stunned. <laughs> this was no helicopter, and this was no plane. And, uh, in fact, this is what I saw. For two and a half hours, he watched and photographed this object as it hung in the air until eventually it disappeared, and he wasn't alone. Police say they received numerous calls, and Epling found other observers online. You, you asked me if I think it's an earthly origin. All that's left to ask, what is <laughs> I think it is. By definition, it remains an unidentified flying object. And it's still, it's still a UFO until it's identified. Covering the news in Pike County, Adam Weiner, LEX 18 News. Alan Epling and the local newspaper made calls to the Air Force and to local airports. So far, no one has claimed responsibility for the mysterious object. I wonder what it was. Several people in the Oildale area and some in Bakersfield reported seeing strange lights in the sky last night. Unsure of what to make of it, they asked Eyewitness News to check it out. I looked up and I seen a perfect triangle, three lights, and they were like orangish red not blinking. Well, this was like a dull yellow and you can just see it like a, like if you were to put a triangle and you flip the triangle flat. It wasn't a bird and it wasn't a plane. I think it was UFO. The only thing I could think it was was aliens. Yes. They're moving. Catch this it. is real yes. stuff. Catch it. Catch this is not fake. It's been described as a light or lights in the sky, varying in color, number, the speed it was moving, and what time it was visible. But no one can pinpoint what it was that they saw. To me, it looked like a paper bag. That I mean, thank you for being here tonight. We begin in the skies above Vancouver Island. In the past week, there have been multiple reports of strange flying objects darting across the horizon above Victoria. On Friday, a meteor streaked across B.C., working its way down into Washington State. But it's what else was in the sky that night? that has many curious, including a prominent UFO researcher who says he's now on the case. CTV's Gord Kerbis has the story. A meteor tracking website shows the January 11th reports of people sighting a fiery object in the sky traveling from BC towards Washington state. But it seems that a meteor may not have been the only thing in the sky at that time. There are definitely some odd stuff took place on the 11th and it took place on the island and in Victoria area around, around there at definitely in the lower mainland. Brian Vike is a UFO investigator based in Houston, British Columbia. That's right, the other Houston. His blog, The Vike Factor, is now filled with sightings from the 11th of strange lights and a triangular-shaped object the size of a school bus over Vancouver Island. A woman had taken her uh, children to school. She stopped. Uh, this is after a 6.30 meteor sighting. She had looked up a flash of the sky again, bang, here comes this solid object, triangular in shape, three orange balls at each of the points. She watched it move along, it came to a hover, and then bang, all the three balls of light went into the center, and bang, this thing was gone. I looked up in the sky and I saw just this light coming over. It doesn't look like it's from Earth, it looks like it's from somewhere else. We've spoken with Vancouver Islanders before about their strange sightings, and Vike has looked into many of them as well. He's been investigating UFO sightings across Canada with a keen interest in his home province. What are you? He was recently sent this video of a strange flying object over the lower mainland shot with a night vision camera. And he's got objects doing all kinds of weird things in the sky at night and everything, and this is on a tripod steady and everything, so it's got some weird stuff. Since starting, Vike has looked into more than 11,000 reports and says 90% of them can be explained. 
Usually people seeing light reflected off the International Space Station. And Chinese lanterns or search and rescue flares are often mistaken for more mysterious objects. But every once in a while, reports jump out at them, like this 2010 sighting by a woman near Campbell River. This thing actually rose up from the from the ground, hovered a little bit, and then came towards her vehicle. By this time, she's kind of you know getting a little excited and freaking out, and it went right over top of her vehicle, and it was another triangle. Bike says 2013 is already starting off with an incredible number of reports. Anyone seeing strange objects is invited to contact him through British Columbia UFOs.blogspot.ca. Gord Kerbis, CTV News, Courtney. Here, something's gonna happen. Nothing ever does. Dang, dude, this is weird. You can't see it no more, but they're there. Everyone agreed that after a while, the lights just disappeared. Oh, well, where did it all go? Where'd it go? Where'd it go? It was just vanished. Oh my God, they're beautiful. Oh my God. So the question remains: Was it aliens? Look at this. We go out to other planets to to investigate and you know find new life. Why can't they do the same thing? Now, the video of those lights was shot by people who saw it last night, local people in the area. And after reports of the sighting last night, Eyewitness News Chief Meteorologist Miles Musio made phone calls to NASA and Vandenberg Air Force Base, but we have yet to get a response. Stories like this one come from viewers like... It's a question for the ages. Are we alone in the universe? Believe it or not, we've actually been asked a lot to find out the answer. And a man who shared his experience with us three years ago is now sharing it with the nation. Will Whitson is live in Myrtle Beach to share our own experiences with the supernatural Will. Well, we get a lot of calls to investigate stories, guys, and sometimes those stories, well, they happen up there. It's almost a cultural phenomenon for odd happenings to be in South Carolina and North Carolina, and when people experience it, they call us to share. We're taking phone calls, we're answering emails, looking at Facebook. Any type of concern the community has, we like to answer them as well. Sometimes those concerns deal with something literally out of this world. All the tourists are in town, they got their cameras, they're seeing these lights out over the ocean, and it just sort of, you know, can grow to be something pretty big. I've seen some of the orange lights that people call in and, um, and claim that they have video up. No, not that kind. Something more like this. Local business owner and pilot Gary Travis shot video of it three years ago. Our interview with him went viral online, and now he's being featured on a National Science Channel program. I'm not going to be a guy that tells you I think they're alien spacecraft, and I don't have any guy proof of that. You know, it would be fun to think something like that might happen. About five to ten feet above the two-story building or home was two bright lights that showed up. Check this out. The National UFO Reporting Center keeps a database of reports in every state. There are almost 1,200 reports in South Carolina, many from right here in the Grand Strand. All of a sudden, the emails we get, the phone calls, the Facebook messages, they all really increase. Even members of our own WMBF News family have had an encounter. And we all kind of got up, followed her out to the street, and saw this bright orange light. UFOs aren't the only weird happenings in the Grand Strand. Some phenomenon have been here for generations. The big one we hear about all the time is the uh, Seneca booms. My theory was maybe somebody's propane tank exploded. If you search hard enough, you may find a logical explanation. Probably the most common thing that we see around here um, is what's called chaff, which is basically a little, uh, little bits of metal particles that uh, military aircraft drop. But after an encounter, you may want to believe there's something bigger out there. The universe is remarkable and it's infinite. Maybe we'll see a little sighting here over Myrtle Beach, over the Atlantic, and we'll be able to be live local late breaking on the scene then too. When I asked Travis about his experience on the uh, Science Channel TV show, he said he was happy to share that experience. He says he thinks there are more people out there that have had these encounters with supernatural phenomenon, and he thinks they should speak up. Live in Myrtle Beach, Will Whitson, WMBF News. Here's a story. Some Amherst residents say they saw a real UFO over Hampshire County. That's right. As CBS 3 Springfield's April Baker tells us, some Amherst residents, they're open to the possibility of extraterrestrial life coming to Western Mass. Well, Chris, there certainly is a buzz today around Amherst about a possible UFO sighting. I went around town to speak with people about what they thought about this unexplained sight. <laughs> Laughter seemed to be everyone's initial reaction when I asked them about a possible UFO sighting in Amherst. But laughter aside, it was a hot topic in town today. Yeah, actually I heard about it when I got into work this morning. I didn't hear a lot about the story, but people were talking about it. On Tuesday between 5 and 7 p.m., several witnesses say they saw a diamond-shaped, dimly lit object in the sky. 
The object was reported to be moving slow and hovering about 75 to 100 feet above the ground. A plane has been one possible idea of what the mystery object could be. But today I was told otherwise. Westover saw nothing on the radar, so who knows what it could have been. But do people in Amherst really believe it could be a UFO? Some people say it's possible. It could have been a UFO, who knows? No one really knows if it was or wasn't. I guess you can see a UFO just about anywhere, usually in more less populated places than, say, Amherst, but, you know, I guess you can see them anywhere. But whether you believe in UFOs or not, people say it's important to be open to the possibilities. I give them credit. If they want to talk about it, I think it's fine. I, I wouldn't want to deny somebody their experience. Now here's another fun fact. The National UFO Reporting Center says December 10th has been the most common day for reported UFO sightings over the past 50 years. Reporting in Amherst, April Baker, CBS 3 Springfield. Hey, who knows? Well, a mo mother and daughter in Natton are also keeping their eyes on the sky. They say something was flying over their house and they have no idea what it was. A plane? A UFO? perhaps some paranormal activity. Our Nadia Stewart gets to the bottom of it. Usually the lights shining bright above Sam Martini's Nanton home are the sun, moon and stars. But on Sunday, she saw something a little different. It rose so slowly and then when it came at us, it came so quickly. It was around 11 o'clock at night. Sam and her daughter Bailey were at home watching TV. When outside, they noticed a pair of bright lights. They ran out to get a better look. Then the light just started coming straight at us and went straight and went straight over our house and headed to the northwest behind us. These blurry pictures, the only evidence of what they saw, whatever it was, it frightened the cattle. It was unlike anything Sam had seen before. Well, the way those white lights were hanging in the sky as long as they were and they didn't change color and they didn't change size for so long. That just makes me wonder. And sightings like these are more common than you may think. According to the Canadian UFO survey, there were 1,180 sightings last year, more than 100 in Alberta alone. And experts say there have been reported sightings of paranormal activity in Nanton before. Between the pictures and witnesses, experts say on the surface it's an unusual case and probably an explainable one too. They aren't quite convinced that this is paranormal activity. The shaking of the object or the movement of the object, um, that looks like um, a camera on a, with a time exposure on it that may have been bumped. It, it, it looked very sporadic. So a UFO? Probably not, say the experts. But he and others are fans of anything that gets Albertans gazing up into the night sky. Nadia Stewart, CBC News, Calgary. New at 11 from Cape Coral to California, people across the country are reporting mysterious lights in the night sky. All right, take a look. Some people say they look like fireballs. A Cape Coral family saw our newscast at noon about these lights in California on New Year's Eve and almost jumped off their couch. They say they saw the exact same thing at their house last night. NBC2's Alex DeArmas picks up our story. It was a normal Sunday night for this Cape Coral family. Until in the night sky, big red orange light. Right behind that was another one. And then right behind that was another one. Roxanne Hoffman says she saw something similar to this. This is video from California on New Year's Eve. Like a reddish orange, almost like a fireball but you just didn't see any flames. She says the lights came from the north. Neither she nor her mother-in-law heard a thing. Just like they're following each other. Just like it would be two people following each other, right? And it was weird. They say the lights then got behind a large cloud and disappeared. It was weird. It was really, really weird. NBC2 discovered the National UFO Reporting Center took 200 calls in two days, all reporting orange, reddish lights in the sky. Clearly, the reports that have come in here during the last 40 hours have virtually nothing to do with fireworks. The director of the center, Peter Davenport, says in the past 19 months, he's gotten over 5,000 similar calls. And they seem to defy any similarity to terrestrial aircraft. 
We just don't know what they are. Davenport says a small percentage of these cases can be Chinese lanterns or hot air balloons. But he isn't convinced they all are. At least we feel we're not seeing things, you know, and it's been seen somewhere else. While the mystery still remains, Hoffman says she's keeping an eye out. In Cape Coral, Alex DeArmis, NBC2. The Sri Lanka Air Force states that it is keeping a 24-hour vigil regarding the unidentified lights that were witnessed in the skies over several parts of the island in the recent past. SLAF media spokesperson Wing Commander Shiraz Jalaldeen said that no unidentified airborne craft had been picked up on radar as yet. Meanwhile, unidentified lights were witnessed in the skies over several parts of the island yesterday as well. This is the unidentified light that was witnessed in the skies above Hambigamwa in Tanamal Villa at around 8.30 p.m. last night. <laughs> Meanwhile, this unidentified light was captured on a mobile phone camera in the eastern skies above Ambalantota. An unidentified light was also recorded on a mobile phone camera in the skies above Ihalayagoda in Gampaha. News first reported on several similar incidents in the recent past. What are these unidentified lights? If they are not UFOs, then who is responsible for informing the public as to what they are? News first will remain vigilant. Wobei das Mehrwertigste daran lässt sich jedoch erkennen, wenn wir das von der Tunnelkamera aufgenommen viel Material verlangsamen. Bemerken Sie das mysteriöse Licht, welches das Fahrzeug scheinbar verfolgt? Könnte es sich hierbei um das gleiche Licht handeln, durch den der Fracht-Lkw letzte Woche abgehoben wurde? Die Art und Weise, wie sich die beiden zwischen... There was something dazzling in the sky last night, and we're not talking about New Year's Eve fireworks. Well, people from all over Northern California contacted us to report a bizarre flying object or objects. Most of the sightings happened just after midnight. News 10's George Warren spent the day trying to identify the unidentified flying objects. Well, we saw it right through the trees. It was bright enough to shine directly through the trees without any problem seeing it. Stephen Brown watched it over Sacramento. Hans Mount spotted it over Auburn. Kind of approached from over that direction and <clears throat> came across kind of slow. Did they see the same thing that Kay Pinlack saw in Stockton? Pretty much right above this palm tree here. Multiple objects, he says, captured on his iPhone. I've I seen like six bright orange color lights and they're like in, almost in a diamond or triangle shape they're, it was weird and then, so they started just separating you see that other one up there on the right though and oh, not just one northern one. california somebody posted this video from the hollywood hills on youtube multiple glowing objects out there among the new year's eve fireworks and now it's three there's two, there's two of them no 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 there's one, three two, all three, together right four. no it's four, it's four now in Auburn, Hans and his wife Terry saw it a few hours earlier than the other sightings. But there was no sound. That's the funny thing. Or, or the lights, you know, yeah. the usual lights. No sound, no blinking that, so. lights, just <laughs> this big illuminated form. And whatever it was moved up and to the left. Uh, it hovered there for probably about 60 seconds and then it took off at a high rate of speed out of sight directly away from us and just disappeared. Of course, we're always looking for rational explanations for UFO sightings. This 2008 sighting over the Sacramento Valley turned out to be an airplane with an electronic sign under the wings. A year later, a mysterious flashing light near Placerville turned out to be arcing power lines. There's a light. We're still waiting to find out if there's a rational explanation for what people saw last night all across California. Now, an FAA spokesman tells me that there was no unusual aircraft activity reported to the FAA last night. If this was some sort of hoax, it would have to be a pretty elaborate one because it was seen by so many people all over California. Well, yeah, up and down the state, which is interesting, and, and within hours of each other. Yeah, so the earliest sighting we heard about was about 8 p.m. up in Auburn, uh, Terry and Hans. Uh, they said it was just a single object they saw, very uh, moving unnaturally, too fast for a balloon, too slow for an airplane. 
airplane. Uh, in Sacramento as well, Stephen said that it was a single object hovering and then streaking away. And then, of course, down in Stockton, the, the multiple objects, as in uh, Hollywood. That's the interesting part, that it was hovering and then it started cruising. Yeah. That suggests, yeah, it's not a balloon. Or There's some intelligent under. control okay. of um, this thing. Nothing showed up on radar that the FAA is willing Not to that they're telling about. us. We, we <laughs> also sure talked, would, yeah. we checked with Travis Air Force Base in Beale, and they said, of course, nothing unusual happening. All right. Yeah. Well, you know, it'll be interesting if someone can step forward and offer Please. an explanation. I'm dying to know. Come with me outside, bro. Check this what, out. Dude? Check this out, dude. You're gonna freak out. Watch. Hurry, hurry, oh, real fast. Hurry, 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 hurry. Dude, for what, like the what is it? like the past like two minutes, dude. 
Since I've, I was pulling up, man. Watch, check it out, dude. It's like this loud sound outside, dude. It's like super loud. What do you mean? I don't know what it is, dude. Watch. Listen, it's like coming from the sky. Listen, hear that? Dude, what is that? It's loud, huh? I don't know what it is. It's like coming. I don't know where it's coming from. What is that? You hear it? You see anything in the sky? No. I've been looking. What is that? I've been looking like I can't find nothing, dude. How long have you been hearing it for? Like two minutes. I don't know what it is. I have no idea. I know. Greetings people, Paul Mucker here. Today's November 22nd, 2012. Happy Happy Turkey Day America. Um anyway the point of this video is to give you a quick rundown, right? Um for the first time yesterday I heard about this um planetary alignment over the pyramids of Giza, my friend and Tiger. She sent me a message and asked me to um, what I thought about it, and I never heard about it before. But after she told me about it, I went and did uh, some research, and I found a few articles on it. But however, I went back to some of my old videos, and I um, I realized that on um, June 4, 2011, I uploaded a video showing with this picture here showing the planetary alignment. Over the Prima Giza, no people. This, this is a. I, don't, I found this picture on the internet a few years ago. I don't know if it's a real. I don't know when I say real. I do not know if it, if the, the artist got it from a, a, a depiction, in Egypt, or he just made this up. I don't know. What I'm saying is that is this an ancient drawing? If it's an ancient drawing, people, do you know what this means? Look at this picture, real good people. And you can see. The um, Sirius Orion system aligning with with um that's the Sirius Orion system, right? And they're aligning over the pyramid, pyramid of Giza, almost similar to the well, I could say similar to the, the, the depiction that these people have. Of what's going to happen in December? 3rd 2012 now people I don't believe in coincidence because even before I heard about this December alignment I've been commenting back and forth with some of my um, viewers about what's going on in the Middle East today and about the revolution in Egypt and capstone and the pyramid I mean all kind of stuff and something is going on people I'm not saying that they're gonna be a great like the end of the world or nothing like that. I don't believe that. I never believe the world gonna end just like that. At least I, I stopped believing that in 2000 and, um, 2008 when I came to my senses and stopped believing the Christian God. That's when I stopped believing that the world gonna be destroyed. So <clears throat> the point being, people, I am um, this picture right here dramatized. A planetary alignment with the Sirius Orion system over the pyramids of Giza. It's not a coincidence that it's going to happen on December 3rd, 2012. And if this is an accurate drawing that they found in, in Egypt, that means this happened thousands of years ago. So maybe these guys are right. Maybe this happened every 2000 plus years. Who knows? But it's very interesting and um, I'm going to do some more research right I mean I have a lot of ideas people I have a lot of ideas actually I know see most of you think that the pyramid are tombs of kings but they're not okay one of them is the, the, the great pyramid is a tomb but it's not a tomb of King Khufu 
Okay, it's a tomb of Osiris. Okay? <laughs> okay, it's a throne of Osiris. I'm gonna tell you all about it. When I make the video, right? See, this is just a preview I'm giving you all, right? When I make the video about what I think about the planetary alignment on December 3rd, I will elaborate more, but right now, I, I, as I told you all before, I'm working on my last suit because, um, you know, as you all know, I got locked up because of my, you know, my videos and my, my fight against the banksters and I sued them in federal court for malicious prosecution and the judge ruled that he not going to allow them to get away with thought. He not going to allow them to commit thought. So, I, got, I just got to redo my, my, my complaint, you know, to reflect the malicious prosecution so I gotta work on that my deadline is Monday so after I finish that I'm gonna make the video about what I think about the planetary alignment on December 3rd so I just wanted to just give you all an update on what I think about it you know and um, share your views with me you know each one must teach one the only way we're gonna figure this thing out is if we share information okay so um, no one have all the answers but together each one of us put a piece together, we can fi fix the puzzle. But before I go, people, this is what I want to say to y'all people, right? If this picture here, right, is a true depiction of what from ancient time, then people look at that picture. People don't, do I ask what I'm seeing, people? This picture would prove people, this drawing would prove people that the pyramids were not built in a desert. People look at the look at the line, look at the water line people. That's water. Okay? That's a lush green plateau uh plain. That's lush green. People look at it. Okay? You can clearly see the water line coming close to where the pyramids are. So that means people, the pyramid will build on a lush green pasture. Okay? Not in the desert. So something happened. Something happened that turned the Giza plateau into a desert okay I don't know but one thing I know I feel in my heart that the pyramids of Giza was not built in the desert but was built right next to the waterline as this joint depict so anyway here's a bonus for you guys people right um, a few years ago I took this picture of Sirius and while I was taking the picture of people, I was talking junk, and guess what popped up? A UFO, okay? It's a UFO because it doesn't look like a, an airplane. It only flashed once, it never came back again, and I was there looking and it never came back. And uh, you're gonna see the details on it, okay, people? This is a UFO. I don't care what you all say it is, but to me, it's a UFO because I cannot identify it, neither can any of you. If you cannot identify it, when it's clearly something an object then it's a ufo okay so you're gonna hear me talk junk to serious and when i say that oh that's why when i say um about the rainbow colors right you're gonna see a flash actually i'm gonna i'm gonna put a right in to let you know when it's gonna flash because you have to, if you're not quick you're gonna miss it so um here's the video people this is a real life ufo okay and more on the december Third planetary alignment. One love. Hey Cyrus. Hey Cyrus. Come on, blink. Go ahead then. I want a nice display. There you go, Cyrus. Come on, brighter. Brighter. Bigger. Not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord of hosts. Not by might, not by power, or service, but by my spirit. Let me see you do something. Got you. Mm. Rainbow colors, huh? That's why they call it the rainbow star. Mm. 
rainbow colors, huh? That's why they call it the rainbow star. Oh, wow. I just seen that. I just seen the other flash of Cyrus. Do the game. <laughs> there you go. Can I have another one? Just like that one. 